Hello, my name is Bastian Ray. First off, apologies for not posting videos lately. I was visiting my parents on the other side of the world earlier in the month and have been busy with a few other things. Today, however, I'm going to do a video that I've been wanting to do for a long, long time. What you're seeing in the background is Twisted Twiglegs VR tutorial running on an Oculus Quest. This is a very quick and dirty port that needs a lot of tidying up, but it shows Godot running on a Quest nicely. In this video, I want to run through the steps of getting Godot up and running on the Quest. Before we begin, I have to give a shout out to Freddia Huyo Kadao. I'm butchering your last name there, sorry man. All the credit goes to Freddia, who offered his Android knowledge and the quest he has access to, and made the quest plugin work. I also need to say thanks to Oculus, who have provided me and a few others in the Godot team with quests. Without their help, this video and the ones I hope will follow wouldn't be possible. When deploying to any Android device, you will need to install Android Studio, so that is where our journey starts. I'll put the download link in the description below. We'll let the installer do its work. There is no need to make special choices here. After the installer wizard, we'll get a few more setup questions. Again, I'm just using default settings here. I'm not sure about the installation error at the end. It didn't seem to be giving me any problems. The plugin will be downloadable from the asset library once Godot 3.2 is released. But for now, we need to compile the plugin ourselves. So we need a few more options. If you're watching this when the plugin is already available, feel free to skip over compiling the plugin. With Android Studio open, go to the configure menu and select the SDK manager. We need to install the NDK here. Make sure to accept the terms and conditions. We also need to install CMake, so we also select that from the list. Note that Android Studio also made a remark about my user folder having a space in the name. I didn't run into any problems with this here, but I did with compiling Godot for Android. That's a story for another video. I'm not entirely sure if this next step is still needed as I think Android Studio already installs a Java runtime, but the Godot documentation suggests downloading and installing OpenJDK, so that is what we're doing here. This next step will be somewhat different on different platforms, but we need a couple of environment settings. Refer to the compiling for Android page for more information. We'll be looking at setting this up for Windows. Go to the search bar on your taskbar and simply type in environment. Select edit the system environment variables. Next, click on environment variables. We add a new variable called Android Home. We find this folder in the app data folder in the user's home folder. We also add a variable called Android NDK root, which we will also find in the user's home folder. And we add a variable called Android NDK Home that points to the same path. Finally, we add an entry to our path for the location where CMake was installed. I've also previously installed Visual Studio as we need a compiler. We won't be using Python and scones in this tutorial. We can find the source code to the plugin on the Godot VR GitHub page. It's easiest to get the correct URL by opening up the web page. Note that we need the Oculus Mobile plugin. We open up the command prompt that Visual Studio provides. I have already created a folder on the desktop and made it the current folder. We simply type in git clone, paste in our URL and add dash dash recursive. Once the download is complete, cd into the folder that was created. We also need to download the mobile SDK from the Oculus website. There is a handy link on the info page of the plugin you may need to set up an account with Oculus. Download the SDK from here. Then we create a folder into which we want to unzip the SDK. Now we cd into our build folder and run cmake-gninja... And after that is finished, cmake-build... That completes building the plugin. Next we need to download a copy of Godot. Go to the download page to download the game engine. At this point in time, Godot 3.1.1 is the latest version you can download, but we need 3.2. We're very close to the release of this version, so you may well be watching this video when it's out. This is why I'm showing the downloads page. For now, we're going to use one of the alpha releases. Go to the news section on the website. Here you will find an article about the Godot 3.2 releases. 
Find the latest one, the newer the better. There will be a download section in the news article directing you to a folder with a bunch of files. Download the copy of Godot for your operating system. Also download the export templates. Now unzip our Godot executable into the folder we created on the desktop. I did this before I built the plugin, so please don't mind that the plugin isn't there yet. The magic of editing. We'll also drag our templates into our folder. Now we can start up our copy of Godot and create a new project. I select the folder we created on the desktop and we give our project a name. We'll be using the Glass 2 driver as it is far better optimized for mobile GPUs. We also press the Create Folder button properly. With Create and Edit we create our new project. We create a new 3D scene. Soon after 3.2 is released we'll upload our plugin to the asset library. Just search for Oculus. For now we just find the desktop plugin. Instead we'll use the plugin we just compiled. Inside of the demo folder we'll find an add-ons folder that contains the plugin. We simply copy the entire add-ons folder into our project. We start by adding an ARVR origin node to our scene. And we add an ARVR camera node. I'm also renaming the root node to main. Then we save this scene. Next we need to set up our export, so we go to the project menu and select export. None are defined, so we use the add button to add an Android export. This immediately throws up a list of things we need to take care of. Before we do, we'll tackle a few settings. We need to change the XR mode to Oculus Mobile VR. And change our degrees of freedom to 6DOF. The 3DOF option would apply if you want to deploy it to a Go. 6DOF means we support positional tracking. Next we open the Editor menu and select Editor Settings. Scroll down to the Android section. We need to set up the first three settings if we haven't configured these before. First we point to the ADB executable which you will find in your user's app data folder. Next we find our Jar Signer application. This one we find within our Android Studio installation in Program Files. For the last entry we first need to create a key file. We simply copy the command from the Godot documentation page. And then select that file to complete our settings. We return to our export settings. And see that we are still missing our templates. There is a handy link there to download them. Once 3.2 is officially released there will be a download button right in this window. But for now we need to select the template file we downloaded previously. We now need to add a little bit of code to start our plugin. We use the ARVR server to find our interface. And then if we find it, we initialize it. And if that is successful, we change our main viewport's ARVR setting to true. Let's decorate our scene a little bit by adding a cube in it. And adding a light. Before we can run our project, we need to enable the developer mode on our Quest. You do this with the Oculus app installed on your phone. Press the settings cogwheel in the bottom right hand side. Select your Quest and let it connect. Select more settings and select developer mode. Finally, turn it on. Make sure your Quest is connected to your PC with the provided USB cable. In Godot we can press the Android button in the top right to start our game. Very exciting! We can see our cube and our positional tracking is working great. Big shout out to Neospark. He's been working on a cool toolset specifically for the Quest. We won't be using this today, but I am going to steal his controller meshes. I highly recommend trying out his project and I will spend time on it in a future video. Back in Godot, let's open up one of his GLTF files. There is a cute touch controller with a Godot logo, brilliant. To use the controller we simply add two ARVR controller nodes and rename one to left controller and one to right controller. The left controller must be set to controller ID 1 and the right controller must be set to controller ID 2. 
Now we simply drag our GLTF files onto the correct controller nodes. Finally, I'm just going to move a few things into position. And there we have it. Our controllers work nicely. We'll end it here today while we enjoy a little more of Twisted Twig Legs tutorial. With the setup shown in this tutorial, you have your starting point. A lot of stuff I've already covered in previous tutorials will work just the same for the quest. The main thing to keep in mind is that while the quest is an amazing device, it doesn't have the same grunt as you have for desktop VR so you need to design with that in mind. I will start covering some of that, but not until I get some more experience with the quest myself. If you found this tutorial useful, please leave a like. Until next time!